guys, welcome back to another episode of Perspectives. If you're new here, welcome. As always, my heart is to open conversations about things that aren't talked about. I'm not here to change your mind or to tell you what to believe or how to think, but to look at other people's perspectives and encourage you to seek the Lord, to ask Him to search your heart, and yeah, to just gain your opinion and know why you believe what you believe, but also to open conversations. Today I have my friend Jacqueline. If you follow me on any social media, you've probably seen her. But my friend Jacqueline, she's like a big sister to me. Yeah, she's gonna be sharing part of her story and we're just gonna be talking about divorce and touching on some other things that aren't really talked about. Mainly just sharing about like divorce and yeah, how that affects and just all those different things. Do you wanna introduce yourself I didn't, or I was share not anything? nervous at all until you <laughs> said divorce and then I was like, oh. Do you wanna share like where you're at in your life right now or anything? Okay. I'm Jacqueline, I'm 28, um, I'm a full-time missionary, which is still really crazy to say sometimes. Um, I have a heart for Brazil, I feel called there long-term uh, to do ministry centered around like family, uh, kingdom family, and what that looks like, working with street kiddos and yeah, just counseling and things. So do you want to share about your childhood first? Yeah, I grew up in a Christian household. Quote unquote. Um, yeah, quote unquote. <laughs> um, and I believe that my sister's dad was my dad until I was about the age of five. And I met, um, no, I, my mom told me that he wasn't my dad and that my biological father wanted to meet me. And I don't really remember the exact age. I want to say it was like eight, eight years old. Um, and so I met my biological father and started seeing him every other weekend. Um, I stayed like a couple weeks in the summer, the typical, I don't know, separation mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so I started seeing him consistently for about th two, three, maybe four years. Um, again, not really good at the whole timeline thing. And he just kind of disappeared. I did literally... It was like I saw him for two weeks at Christmas time and he was gone. Um, and so shortly after that, uh, my mom got married to um, a man that she would have my brother and sister with. And um, he tried to play the fatherly figure in my life and adopted me at the age of 17, which was kind of like too late in life. I had grown up, had all this like, men trauma kind mm. of stuff and it was just kind of too late in life did you want him to adopt you um i think sort of but i also kind of felt pressure mm. to like ask him to adopt me um i don't know if it was from him specifically or just the situation or if i was just even longing for like a daddy type yeah. thing um but i also was very scared that I would get like eject rejected and abandoned mm. again. Um, and so, yeah, all three fatherly figures were alcoholics, um, some closet, some functional, some whatever. Um, and so I remember several like abusive situations from really early on mm. with my sister's dad. Um, and then I don't really remember a whole lot about like my biological father until recently I've kind of discovered some things that I've remembered um good memories some like weird memories just different things yeah um and so then I had dated a guy that I'd known since I was two years old um and just some pretty rough stuff there yeah um both in his past and just like confirming a lot of things that I had been told growing up. I was told that I was like fat and ugly and that like I would never amount to anything and I was worthless and just all the things. Um, and so I just kind of, I don't know, 
Did it just like make sense? Things. Yeah. That like, like he can he just like affirmed like yeah. all those things. Yeah. So it was like two broken people just yeah coming together. And I had known him since I was two, um, so pretty much my whole life. Mm -hmm. And then we broke up, and I started dating my high school best friend. I want to say it was like two weeks later. It was not a whole lot of time in between um, that first boyfriend. Were you heartbroken whenever y'all broke up? Um, well, we had like broken up and then we had gotten back together a month or so later, maybe two months later. And then I was like, this is not, this is not what I want. Like, I just, it just felt weird. And I was heartbroken the first mm -hmm. time we broke up. And then the second time I was like, yeah, I, this is just doesn't feel right. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't feel right. There was a lot of like drama and stuff that was happening in between and so i was just kind of like mm, deuces mm -hmm. and actually he we were kind of like fighting and i was in kentucky visiting um a really close friend of mine and he changed his relationship status to like single or he took everything off and i was like i guess he just broke up with me like whatever oh my God. that's how i found out and then he didn't talk to me so i'm just like oh what okay whatever oh my gosh. just a lot of stuff and in that time like after that had happened i'd come home and i <clears throat> reached out to my high school best friend because we had kind of broken relationship at that point and i was like hey i just wanted to apologize because he dated an acquaintance kind of of mine mm -hmm. like we were friends but we weren't super close and so I reached out and I was like, I just want to say I'm sorry for the way that I like treated you, blah, blah, blah. And so we just started talking and ha hanging out again. And then we started dating. It was kind of all like smack really fast. Yeah. Um, which I feel like is a red flag <laughs> in that situation anyway. Yeah. And so then we started dating in October and we were engaged by December. So two months. I had known him because we were friends through high school, but that's just really quick. When you're yeah. 18 years old, just turned 19, like that's really, really fast. And so we planned our wedding for, like we would have been together for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and three months before he cheated on me. Um, and that was super, I don't know. I was so heartbroken mm -hmm. and just crushed, like so crushed. And kind of going spiraling and like, what is happening? I thought I was going to spend my whole life with this man. Mm -hmm. um, After he cheated on you, did you break up with him? Like, Yeah, so kind of a little bit before I found out he was cheating on me, he had told me that he wasn't sure that he wanted to be engaged anymore. And I was like, what? We're planning a wedding. Like, what are you talking about? You can't back it up. We're three months from getting mm -hmm. married. Yeah. I planned a wedding for like almost a year. Then just some really fishy stuff. Like he had a best friend that was working with him and just some really like stuff. How did you stuff. like find out that he was cheating? Well, um, we had broken up for like a day, broke off everything for a day and then we got back together and he was like, I'm not sure I want to be engaged. And I was like, okay, we can just like kind of sort, like figure it out as we go. And I was house sitting for my grandparents and I went because I forgot something. I worked at Sonic. I forgot my apron. I went inside our apartment and find him and this girl in a bed together. And yeah, I was so shook. I don't, I like remember shaking and like running out of my apartment and just crying hysterically. I called my sister on the phone and I was like, mm -hmm. I don't even know what to do. And then his mom calls me and was like, you need, to, I told him he needs to make a decision. So whatever. Oh my God. So we broke everything off. Um, we got rid of our apartment and I moved in with the man that adopted me for a little while. He worked out of town a lot. Mm. And so I like moved in with him. And then a couple months later, here comes my person question mark. And he was like apologizing and said all the right things. And I was like, well, you're going to work to get me back. Um, because I'm not just going to whatever. Yeah. But I remember when I saw them in the bed, I remember, I can tell you exactly where I was standing. Obviously I was wearing because I was working at Sonic. Yeah. And um, I remember just this like flip of a switch 
and I was like I will never feel this way about someone ever again in my whole life and I just like I can I can imagine the way I felt and everything in that moment and so then um I had told him he had to earn his way back in my life whatever and he he did for the most part um I don't even really remember what that was like mm -hmm. and then we basically decided it was May we were about to go on family vacation we decided on a Monday to get married that Friday there was like 10 15 people there um and yeah we got married dang my family was not happy my family was like you don't need to do this like this is not the right decision um and I was just searching for uh, people to just affirm me yeah so anybody that was like no I was like uh-uh everybody else I was like okay yeah tell me tell me yeah. I'm right tell yeah. me I'm doing the right thing yeah uh, I feel like if your family is for the most part if your family is against it it's probably a really big red flag mm. you should probably listen to that yeah so yeah um we got married our marriage was really, really hard. Um, we, I, we tried to get pregnant pretty immediately. I, I think at first it wasn't intentional on my part. I think I accidentally kind of got pregnant. Then I miscarried. Like I found out I was pregnant and the next morning I miscarried. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't even know. He had no idea that I miscarried. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know how I kept that from him. I just, it was awful. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. And then about six months later, um, we were trying. He didn't want kids, but I was, we were trying. Yeah. And Did he vote, like, was he vocal about not wanting kids? He was just saying all the time that he was really scared. He was really scared to have kids. Um, he wasn't sure that he wanted to be a dad or that he could be a dad. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of trauma in his past too with like, um, his mom and his dad and um, just the way that their relationship kind of mm -hmm. fold, unfolded or what he was even told. He never really had understanding of what yeah. even happened. Um, they kind of got preg pregnant with him and then they got married because they were pregnant gotcha. kind of thing. And so six months later, I got pregnant again. Same thing. I found out I was pregnant. The next day I miscarried and I still kept it a secret. Again, not sure how. I was really early on, but I, that just sent me into this even deeper, darker cycle of depression. Mm. I was what they would consider functionally depressed. So I would get up, go to work, go get fast food, come home, go to bed. Mm. Um, and we weren't having sex. We were like, I was kind of just really closed off to a lot of stuff. Mm. We would have sex, but it would be like once a month. At that point, how long were y'all married? It was still like a couple months in. Yeah, that was, we were, a, our first miscarriage was like six months into our marriage. And then the second one was a year. Gotcha. But he didn't know that either miscarriage happened until about six months after. Um, when one of my siblings got pregnant and I saw the announcement and I was like sitting in our living room with him on one of our really random days off together. And I saw the announcement and I just like, went to our room and I like just sobbed mm. and sobbed and sobbed and he was think he didn't know what was going on like yeah. what what's wrong and so then I had to tell him where I was at he knew I was depressed he knew like something was going on but yeah. he didn't understand yeah like infertility and not being able to get pregnant our culture and society says you're a woman and you should be able to carry a baby and that's your job and all of these things. Plus my whole life, I wanted to be a wife and a mom. Yeah. And so that was like, I can't even be that. Like I can't putting your identity that. in that and then not yeah. even being, yeah. Yeah. Um, literally every piece of my worth and identity was being a wife and a mom. And I wasn't even that great of a wife at that point. Cause I yeah. was super depressed yeah. and then I couldn't get pregnant and I could get pregnant but then I couldn't carry the baby. And so then I'm like, something's wrong with me. Like yeah. I'm not worthy enough, whatever. Yeah. So then I, about two, two and a half years into our marriage, we went to a Christian counseling, like not counseling, a Christian retreat. Yeah. And he got saved 
and I forgave him for cheating on me and my fatherly figures and all the things as best as I could. Mm -hmm. um, that's also kind of where I gave my life to the Lord in a relationship way. Mm. I, did, I was very religious minded before. And then our marriage was like incredible. It was the best it had ever been. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it can't get better than this. Like we're reading the devotions together. We're praying together. Yeah. Um, he would stay up and I, when I would wake up, we would spend time with the Lord together and just all the things. So good. And then about six months later, something about six months, um, everything just kind of went downhill. Mm. I was just spiraling out of control. Um, again, like in my thoughts, not really just outwardly, like everything but just like yeah. overwhelming you mentally. Yeah. Just something's wrong. What am I doing wrong? Well, maybe he's wanting, like he's changing and he's angry with me because I can't get pregnant. Like all these things. Were you still try trying to get pregnant at that mm -hmm. point? Yeah. We were, tr in my mind, we were trying to get pregnant up until I found out that he was cheating on me again yeah so then in february of 2018 he told me he wanted a divorce and i said well just take a week and pray about it because that's what you say right yeah but i already kind of knew where he was at yeah and then i found out he still told me he wanted a divorce the week later and then i found out that monday that he was cheating and it was literally verbatim what had happened with the with the previous girl so i knew it but i didn't have the the mm -hmm. evidence mm -hmm. and then i got the evidence and i was like Okay, this is this is where we're at and at that point I feel like I because I knew it but I didn't have the evidence I was kind of already out of it hmm. um, a little bit yeah but he he didn't know that I knew he was cheating until about three months in to the whole situation mm -hmm. um, he was playing the back and forth game like wow. I think I want you oh no the grass is greener on the other side I think I want you no the grass is greener on the other side kind of thing um, and so all the states are different with divorce, but we finally filed for divorce. And in the state of Tennessee, it's 30 days that you have to wait for your paperwork to literally sit in a courthouse mm -hmm. before the judge will sign it. And I think it's 60 days with kids. So um, we filed the paperwork and then there was like a glitch. And so it got a little bit extended. So our divorce was finalized in July of 2018. Wow. And just like I got into Christian counseling, but I was really just cycling through. I feel like I have to stay with him because even I when he asked for a divorce, like what what was going through your mind, like growing up in church and stuff, like was it something that was okay? Did you feel like like where where were you at mentally in that whenever he asked for a divorce? I think I okayed it to some degree in my mind because he cheated on me. Mm -hmm. That's my escape. Like yeah. I, it's okay for me to get out, but. In the reality of things and even just like my insecurity and the father and the daddy mm -hmm. and the I was the daddy issues girl and all of the all of the things I was like no one's ever gonna want me again mm -hmm. like I've given my first to this man my first time of sex my first like house we bought mm -hmm. a house together um, I got pregnant for the first time with him and yeah I don't have my kids here but like I was pregnant yeah. by him first and just all of these things like no one's literally ever going to want me. I'm disgusting. There was just so much shame mm -hmm. around. So when he was like, Hey, I think I, I want to be with you and I don't really want this girl. I was thinking, you were like, Oh, I have to, like, I don't have a choice mm -hmm. because no one else is going to want me. So I don't have a choice. I have to stay with you. And, but through like my counseling that I was in, she was like, you have two choices. <laughs> You can go through a really long and hard road, but you're choosing that long and hard and you're mm -hmm. going to have to be committed to it. Or you have a f the freedom to walk away. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, okay. I have a choice here. I'm not, I don't have to stay in this. So looking back now, whenever you were dating him, like what would you tell yourself then? Like when you were dating before, mm -hmm. I'd say before he cheated, what would you tell yourself like in that, that girl? I, f I wish that I would have known like my worth and my identity in God and who he says that I am. Um, because I had so many issues, like quote unquote, I don't know, issues with men. Mm. Um, just fatherly figures. I was literally longing for a man to love me. Mm. Not realizing that God loves me and chooses me because of that like even religious mindset. Mm -hmm. 
I wish I would have known my like worth and my identity in God. Yeah, if I could go back. I think if I could even go back to right before I got married and realized that the people that said not to get married were not acting because they didn't love me. Mm. They were acting out of love for me yeah. and care for me because they, not that they knew that we would get divorced, but they just kind of knew they that it would be They saw all the red flags. Yeah. And they were just like, mm, this doesn't look like it's going to add up to yeah. something good. And I was just so like, just engulfed mm. in all of the like, oh, he loves me or he, I don't know. He says the right things mm. or it seems like it's going to be good. It'll be fine. We'll get married and everything will be fine. Yeah. Once you're married, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All your problems go away when you get married. Yeah. But that's not the truth. It, if anything, it just magnifies mm. all of your insecurities and your like, not, I'm not saying don't ever get married. Yeah. I think it's a good thing if you're in a healthy place, but I think it just magnifies everything for you. Mm -hmm like we need to go through like each step so and like ask questions more in depth of each thing so like the dating part i feel like the red flag thing is like such a big thing so like red flag he cheats on you while you're dating it's a red flag like maybe but i think that not even like yes he cheated on me when we were engaged but I don't, I think there were red flags before that. So like what would be some of the red flags before that, that you can think of? Um, well, his unhealthy relationship with his mom, mm. he had a super unhealthy relationship, would go and tell her all of our problems. And there's just boundaries mm. that should be put <laughs> there. Yeah. Like your family should not be your counselor in your relationship because they take your side. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Your family will always take your side. Even if your family doesn't even care for you that much, your family will always take your side. And yeah. so more than they would choose the other person. Yeah. And so, um, I think just, even if it seems like, Oh, they'll, they'll take my side more yeah. than they'll take their kids. No, I promise you. They will always take care, take their yeah. kids side first. Um, I think that was a big red flag. There was so much drama um, she would act like we were best friends to my face, but then I would hear stuff from oh other people gosh. and I was just like, I wish I would have paid attention. His dad loved me. Yeah. And I, I believe he really did. Yeah. Um, I even saw him after the divorce and he hugged me and was like, it's so good seeing you <laughs> and stuff. So I think he had, he was like, he's a good man. Yeah. So being no boundaries with your parents is a mm -hmm. red flag. Are there any other ones that you can think of? I know there's some, but let me, oh, I'm trying to think of like specifically in the moments. He wasn't ever abusive. Well, like physically or emotionally, are you referring to? Um, I think he, uh, his abandonment of emotions like he, he was just really disconnected yeah in every form mm. I, and i wasn't emotionally healthy so i i didn't really recognize that but he was very disconnected from himself which is a big red flag yeah especially now that i've like connected and like un i'm understanding yeah. emotions more that's a huge red flag thing not that i think that's like a make or break but i do think that's a big red flag yeah i think if you're um morphing into each other and you're becoming unhealthily Committed. you're like negative not not you're good you're like negative stuff is morphing together oh yikes yikes so That's how would good. you know and be aware of that i think people around you know mm. i can tell, tell you that know. my mom told me jacqueline you're not laughing like you used to mm. and not like a, not in a bad way, but just like even the like way Like telling that, the difference. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't happy anymore. Yeah. I, like I would laugh. <laughs> it wasn't that I wasn't laughing. Yeah. But it wasn't my laugh that was like truly, like from true happiness yeah. kind of thing. That's interesting because I think back to like my toxic relationship and like my mom said the same thing. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That crazy. I just think like if your family 
a big red flag if your family is like I, this isn't right or I mean I pray to God your family is gonna tell you yeah but um if the, if there is even concern from your family or people close to you mm. don't just look for someone to agree with you yeah get someone who isn't and ask them questions like what are you seeing why are you yeah why are you saying that this isn't a good thing or a healthy thing right because they're not just gonna like make something up and mm -hmm. just be like no I don't think it's good but they'll have like reasons and examples and mm -hmm. I don't know just like getting really honest with yourself too even asking the Lord to like open your eyes for like truth mm -hmm. like to not just like see things as like yeah how they say like rose colored glasses or whatever but to like be really honest with yourself like okay what does the future look like and well, the, seeing the red flags. I think, too, too, when you're in love or you think you're in love, mm -hmm. healthy or unhealthy, you kind of don't see the bad negative things. You yeah. might see a little bit. It's true. It takes time. Mm -hmm. And, like, I mean, you like you all, you all moved quick. I think it's different, too, like, being friends and then, like, being in a relationship. But, like, still. I, I mean, we know. were friends and it then takes... we were in a relationship. But it's so different being in a relationship than being friends too, mm -hmm. though. So yeah. like, it takes time while you're in a relationship to like see the things and like I don't know the honeymoon phase to be over with. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just think that you can get caught up in uh, you see negative type things, but you don't understand completely the negatives. Mm -hmm. And so outside sources are going to be more reliable yeah. than yourself and what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Yeah. Especially because you're like in it. Yeah. You, you're not like seeing it from the outside. Mm -hmm. And so to get other opinion and marriage is a commitment. Like it's a covenant. Yeah. You're making a commitment. Yeah. Not just with this person, but with the Lord. And so taking that seriously. Yeah. And do you feel like you took it seriously then? I don't think I had the understanding or the revelation of what covenant really was. Mm. I think I had this idea of what marriage was, mm. but I didn't understand the covenant relationship with the Lord um, and this person um, and just even the the depth of that. Yeah. Um, even creating like soul ties. There's good soul ties and there's bad. Yeah. When you have sex with a person, you're creating a soul tie. Yeah. There's even like the emotional soul ties mm -hmm. like you don't have to have sex to so have yeah. a soul tie which, yeah 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 when Super someone said that the other day i was kind of like pondering on that and just going wow yeah that's so true like i haven't actually like thought that yeah. but it's true yeah so but. just realizing what your marriage isn't just a this rainbow lollipop mm -hmm. land it's hard and are you going to be committed at the end of the day to the person yeah. i think that there are certain circumstances cheating abuse that god said like God says it's okay to get divorced. Yeah. Um, now, do I think, oh, I'm not in love with this person, quote unquote, anymore. So I think it's okay to get divorced. No, that's a choice you made. Right. You choose to love a person. You choose, love. you choose to fall out of love with a person. And you're willing to break covenant with God yeah. and with a person because you fell out of love. So in, like, whatever. No, I don't agree with that. Yeah, same. Yeah, I think... That's like a big thing for me is that like love is a choice. Like it's not always like feeling good or mm -hmm. yeah, like sometimes it's easy to love, but sometimes it's also really hard and you have to choose to love and like to do the hard things or whatever it may be, but like mm -hmm. it's worth it. And yeah, cause we're human and we like, we hurt each other. That's yeah. inevitable kind of thing, but yeah. even just choosing to love despite the way that they've hurt you kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Do you feel like, so your mom was a single mom. Do you feel like there was any like negative con like condemnation or whatever from like the church or anything about like growing up in a single like parent home? Not necessarily. I think, I think it was always really hard and I don't really know the depth of being raised by a single mom and how that like outwardly that's all you affected. Know. Yeah. I think for me as a person that went through divorce, I had switched churches. Not really not like negating or saying anything bad about my other church. It was just such a small church mm. and I 
took shame on mm. and I didn't I just kind of wanted to be someone that was that j could just like slide in and slide out because mm. of all the pain and yeah, stuff that I was going through <laughs> yeah and so I just kind of like left mm -hmm. the church that I was going to that was really small and I went to a really big church I think it was so good because of the teaching and things mm -hmm. in on some in some level but on the other hand I'm kind of like man I wish that I would have just kind of figured it out a little bit more yeah. and had more of like a community and stuff and I believe that that church would have come around me and mm -hmm. did come around me even though I left to some degree but yeah I just it I don't know there's a different dynamic I think I chose to walk in shame mm. because the devil just literally had me so bound in shame and like literally no one's gonna ever want you yeah um i think i well i know i even went through a period of time after my divorce where i was like i'm gonna prove to my ex-husband that i'm worth it that mm. someone will love me and i think that that didn't wasn't really helpful <laughs> in that time but i was yeah. just Again, I was just grasping and searching like mm -hmm. I want love and I want acceptance and I want someone to know that I'm worthy and that like I'm going to prove it to them. Yeah. It's that works mentality. Yeah. That's good that the church came around you in mm -hmm. that time though. Like that's awesome. I think it's easy to say oh, the church didn't come around me, but it also is more of how you act and it, like how committed are you? It's hard when you're hurt and in pain to like take a step out and say hey i need help it's mm. so hard to do that but my even tracy's community i'll i will never forget there was this girl i had like a whole community of we did crafts together once a month and um after my like everything started happening with my ex-husband they came together and i'm i'm not even a gift person but it was just more of you i don't know seen. yeah and um like somebody cared kind mm -hmm. of thing and they all got me this little gift basket and they got mm -hmm. me sunflowers my favorite flower and I walked in and I was just like what thank you like <laughs> what are you what I was so surprised yeah. but they like did it outside and even just having that community mm -hmm. I was still taking steps of faith and like going yeah because I even felt shame towards them yeah they weren't doing that to me but yeah. I just took that on. Right. And so they even saw and like valued me and mm -hmm. loved me and made me feel seen. And I, I just won't ever forget it. It pops up in my memory sometimes and I'm like, oh, so they're such a good group. And I still stay in contact with them. That's so sweet. But. So your mom went through two divorces when you were like growing up. As a kid, you didn't really process through those emotions and stuff. So you've gone through like an emotion, emotional healing how did you process through that? How did you walk through those emotions of like the trauma of your childhood and just all the things that's happened? I think I've done a lot of like emotional healing from my childhood, but I think also it's just kind of moment by moment. Mm. If I could just sit down and, and like five hours be done mm. with all of my emotional trauma from a childhood, I would be. It'd be so nice to have like yeah. a quick fix and just psh. But, yep. Yeah. Just like not even band aid it. Like get down to the root, get it out, and be done. Yep. Oh, that would be glorious. I think sometimes I'm still dealing with it, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I think I don't really. I think my more. It's been on a broader perspective of rejection and abandonment. Mm -hmm. My that first man that raised me, he was supposed to adopt me, mm -hmm. and he didn't. And so even just like rejecting me and abandoning me, I'm out. Then my biological father coming into my life and rejection and abandonment again. And then even with the man who adopted me later on, I think that was even some form of rejection mm -hmm. and abandonment. I always had to pursue the relationship with him. And then I just kind of got to a point where I was like, I don't even care anymore. Like, what's the point? Yeah. He's not even actively pursuing me either i'm tired of just being the only one yeah i think i just had to get down to more of the root of rejection and abandonment i think for a child whose parents i don't know get divorced when they're younger um there's a lot of trauma even in just learning two separate homes mm -hmm. and 
different things. I can't say that I have a, a like thing for that. Well, too, like if you don't process through that, it affects not just like your future relationship, like romantically, but it affects like your friendships. It affects mm -hmm. like your relationship and how you interact with everybody. Yeah around you because I think it's like, also like a generational curse thing mm -hmm. and it's something that I've really prayed through too. Okay. That's true um, too. It's a generational curse. I mean my grandmother was divorced. Uh, my mom, my dad, uh, my biological father. Mm. I think it's just I mean the, the truth is at the end of the day the enemy is so after a relationship. And family. Yeah. Because that's what can be a kingdom mm -hmm world changing thing yeah and so at the end of the day the enemy is after that and if he can break off relationship i mean he won mm. and getting down to like the root and the core of okay i'm not gonna let this affect my family forever i'm i'm gonna choose to like this generational curse ends with me right now mm. and um we're gonna break it off and um praying lots of prayer lots of prayer and counseling yep counseling i would yeah. all i will always advocate for counseling i think um you need an outside source to like help you process through things yeah totally when you get divorced or if you get divorced or if you're from a family of divorce like god doesn't just like wash his hands of your family and just mm -hmm. be like deuces like you've made a mistake and i am done but there is redemption and like even for you in your life like there is redemption and god's going to redeem what was stolen from you and yeah. i think he already has oh i think even just i'm in missions like yeah i still find that funny because it's crazy to me but i think i at this point with the healing that's happened um i wouldn't take back what i've been through because mm -hmm. it's made me who i am and also there's like two sides to every story and there's um even in divorce i think i said earlier too that i don't agree with divorce if you aren't were cheated on or abused but i think there's two people in a relationship mm -hmm. and you can't it's not i don't know that god's gonna make you sit around for 50 years and hope and pray that this man's gonna come back to you or this woman's gonna come back to you mm -hmm. and i think god has grace and mercy over that and at the end of the day they're gonna have to answer to the lord mm -hmm. and so i think yeah that there's a covering over families still yeah even if you haven't done the right thing or you cheated if you're the cheater and i think god has great like if you come yeah. to a true heart of repentance god has grace and mercy on you yeah that's good that is true it's hard yeah that's good bless you <laughs> i mean i like it, <laughs> I even dealt with it a, what, a couple months ago yeah. where I was like, I think that I convinced myself that I forgave my ex-husband mm -hmm. and the person that he cheated on me with. And they have like a baby now together and they're married. And I've convinced people and myself that I've forgiven them. Mm -hmm. And I had to come to this place of letting go of my pride. And I even wrote them a letter um just like releasing them mm -hmm. from this resentment and anger that i've had towards them and even jealousy that they have what i want um i not not in like total to yeah, just totality like they have like a kid and like yeah they have a family whatever um uh, but i also had to bless them the mm -hmm. bible talks about like blessing those who curse you yeah just think about jesus like how many times did jesus do that Ugh and what an example and it's not easy like yeah. i'm not saying it's easy at all yeah. but just like coming to this realization of man god loves them and god would you show me your heart for this person yeah because the truth is my ex-husband's a broken man yeah and i don't i pray that he and his family come to really truly know the lord and even just receive healing mm. i'm just thinking if there's somebody listening to this and they are in abusive relationship or if they're with somebody that's cheating on them like get help go mm -hmm. talk to somebody um you don't have to stay where you're at and like yeah there's there's resources i'll put down below but talk to somebody like you're not alone and um yeah 
Like I, I would hate for somebody to feel like they need to stay in a relationship as they're listening to this when they're in that situation. Um, either way, I think being in counseling and being like talking to somebody is healthy, even if like your relationship's good. Like I think it's healthy to like mm -hmm. be in counseling and to constantly be um, growing with your spouse. But yeah. especially if like it's one sided, like seek the Lord, but also talk to somebody and get help. And I think that's something too of um, don't see counseling as a as a make it or break it kind of thing see it as maintenance and yeah. taking care and nurturing your relationship yeah. i think that's so important um because you don't have to get to the point of those things um and just having a mediator there and even someone outside that can like ask you questions and get mm -hmm. you talking to each other is so healthy and so it's like so healthy um and even when i get married with the person God has for me. Um, and I don't believe that that's necessarily one person because everybody has free will. Amen. Let's just clarify that. Amen. Um, <laughs> I believe that that's what I'll do. I'll even, we'll be in counseling to yeah. some capacity or yeah. another. Yeah, I definitely think that's healthy. I asked on Instagram questions. I asked, what are things you wish the church slash Christians would discuss regarding divorce? Okay, so this is one of them. How one strike is enough instead of giving someone so many chances till you've had it. So like, I'm I'm getting from that like if one strike of like if they've cheated once that's enough I'm out or if they've been physically abusive like that's enough I'm out. I don't know like dating relationship I feel like if you've cheated, sorry I'm out like you're that's like waving enough. a red flag. <laughs> yeah, like that's enough for me. But marriage like. I don't know it just depends on like one strike I feel like I believe in second chances and then that second chance you blow it then it's like okay we're not going to be doing this well again. I think it depends on how you're taking care of the situation too. true true if the person's hiding it and like deny it or whatever like I it like I feel like uh it's not a one size fits all I feel yeah like. I think too are you willing to get help mm -hmm. and try getting help yeah I don't necessarily agree that one shot's enough because, I mean, I made mistakes. You think I was perfect in my marriage? Right, Absolutely right. not. I, did I cheat? No. Um, I didn't, but I wasn't the perfect wife. Yeah. And no one will ever be the perfect spouse. I'm not saying I was never abusive. Maybe he perceived it. It's all about perception, too, I think, to some That's degree. True. I mean, cheating and, like, abuse is abuse, and yeah. it's not, I'm not minimizing that at all yeah but i think i don't know abuse if you think someone is physically abusive should that other person be out like first time that's hard i mean i think they I have think a, you need to a get yes. help i yeah. feel like it's like immediately like i just think if they're not help. willing to get help yes then i would say yeah we're probably not like that's probably not a good yeah. thing because they'll probably like they're more likely right. to do it again but if you're willing to get help then you and you're processing through stuff yeah that there's not shame if it was for biblical reasons and supporting the people who were left i think we choose to take on shame it's easy but that's where the enemy like just kind of mm. i don't know pelts you <laughs> literally yeah. it feels yeah. like that sometimes and you're just so stuck in shame but I don't know god calls us out there's a scripture in isaiah 61 and that i love that scripture but it talks about god giving um taking away your shame and giving you a double portion mm -hmm. of honor and everlasting joy and um there's even a scripture in romans that i don't know god works together all things for your, mm -hmm. your good Does that literally me? i was just like going i would just kept meditating on those scriptures mm -hmm. um and they weren't always easy to believe but i think god just like renewing your mind even mm -hmm. you're not you're not ashamed like don't be shamed um, well too like it is rewiring of your brain of like years and years of believing this lie mm -hmm. like if, especially if it's from like childhood trauma yeah it's just like renewing your mind and like rewiring and believing something that you haven't believed for years yeah shame is like 
saying that you're the thing that's wrong, but you're not the thing that's wrong. Mm -hmm. What was the other part of that? Guilt says you've done something wrong and shame says you are the thing that's wrong. There you go. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I wasn't going to say the whole thing, but <laughs> since you made me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't know. And like from a perspective of like, I was 17 when my parents got divorced. I was about to be 18 or like something like that. And a big thing for me was taking on responsibility that wasn't mine. And so, yeah. Parents, if you're going through a divorce, don't put things on your kids. That's not their responsibility. But also as a kid, you have every right to put boundaries and you, yeah, it's not your responsibility. Like your parents are not your responsibility. Um, your siblings are not your responsibility. You can love them, but there are like boundaries to protect yourself. And you have like, you're, you're just as important to process through your emotions too. You are part of like that divorce in some way and you have things that you need to process and don't suppress it and just like walk through it and get help healing talk to somebody I know for me like I felt like I didn't have anybody I felt a lot of rejection and I was really good at suppressing things too so I would just encourage you to like talk to somebody and yeah you're not alone that was just like a little blurb of like my perspective yeah of being like an older person that got that had that situation but I did want to like touch on a few things on your infertility, if you don't mind. With your infertility, I don't even know like what questions to ask, honestly, because like I can't relate to that in any way, shape or form. Like mm. I struggle with other things in that way. But like, what do you think the hardest thing in that season was other than the not feeling like you're enough? Like, I don't just like desiring and wanting to nurture and care for you feel like your purpose was attached to that too mm, yeah i think my worth and my like my whole purpose identity everything was just like if i can just my marriage is not the greatest so mm -hmm. if i can just have a baby so it went then, from like being a wife that'll be my purpose like identity everything and then that didn't really work out that much and so then it was like that next mm -hmm. thing yeah, and I don't think that everyone who deals with infertility that that's their their issue or like what they're yeah. wanting. I think women were created to like nurture. That's like you think all women were created to nurture. I think to in some capacity. I think it looks different in different people, but mm -hmm. to some degree, yes. I'm not saying that you have to nurture a child. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm just no, saying yeah. Like in some capacity, I think all women are created to nurture in some form what that looks like I don't really know yeah. but I think I just really longed for a child and I've always growing literally until I was too old for babies baby dolls I took a baby doll everywhere I went same when I was a little girl literally though literally <laughs> everywhere I went dang and stroller and all like I dang. was mommy we gonna be mommy today and so just like I always that I didn't want to be a doctor or a lawyer mm -hmm. or a missionary or whatever. I wanted to be a wife and a mom. Yeah. And I don't know. I think it's even interesting how God's I believe that I will be a wife and a mom. But mm -hmm. also I think it's cool that God's calling me to street kids. Yeah. Because that's a spiritual mom, at least minimally. Oh, yeah. Lots of kids. <laughs> lots of kids. So. Lots of kids. So do you feel like you so like you've had you've had miscarriages like mm -hmm. it's not just like not being able to have like children but like you've had miscarriages mm -hmm. um which is like very difficult and how do you feel like you've walked through the healing of that because i know like every time the birthday comes around like that's mm -hmm. not easy so how do you feel like you've walked in healing in that and how yeah i guess that's i think it's good. been weird because for a while i I always struggled around the birthdays even when I was married um, but I just kind of um, mostly avoided it like I was sad and depressed and whatever but not whatever like nonchalant but I was just sad and depressed but I think I, I didn't really walk through healing until after I was divorced which then felt really weird because I was thinking I'm grieving this these people mm -hmm. 
but I'm not even in the same circumstances as I was before. Mm. I think I wish I knew how to be in grief because it is grief. It is. And it's a deep, deep grief. Like you wonder who these people would have been. Would they mm. have been boy? Would they have been girl? Like what who life they could have been? been. Yeah. Um, I even would see kids that would be their age mm. and I would be like, I could have a child like that. Like I, that could, not that that person That's could really be that child. crazy to think. But I could have a child at that age. When I, we did, or when I did my DTS, there was a, a boy and I was, I didn't really think about it until the birthday came around mm. and it smacked me. Was it close? Me. Oh Yeah. Um, it smacked me upside the head one day and I think that's when I was like man I never truly grieved the losses and I even don't even feel like I really did until last year wow. and when I, I was getting receiving some help help from somebody who had miscarried and even had a stillborn wow. and she just told me you need to write a letter and to the child um, to God about ah. the whole situation and like invite him in kind of like the I'm gonna write a letter to God and then God will write one back mm -hmm. idea and I did and I should go back and read that but I even named them I don't know that I want to share that though no. um but I did name them and I think that that even brought more connection and mm -hmm. healing dang that's good I don't think it's easy but I think I would say get counseling again and Talk about just it. grieve. Like, it's okay to grieve. Mm. You're a mom. Like, I'm a mom. But also, like, the thing you say where if you, like, suppress and you don't, like, feel the pain, then you, like, it's... How it does prolongs it? It, it prolongs oh, it. Well, I haven't said that. Like, I don't remember the exact wording. But basically, it takes a certain amount of time to process through pain in the moment of the pain is happening. Mm -hmm. But if you wait, it turns those few minutes into years. Yeah. And so it, it's an onion. It's peeling back an onion. You're having to walk through all this painful stuff mm -hmm. and you're having to even go back into the painful thing. Mm -hmm. But if you would have just like been okay, we're so not okay with being in pain. Yeah. I mean, like we want to get rid of pain. We want to be okay. Like, but I think just like sitting in it, like grieving and like feeling the emotions as much as it sucks and it's hard and like mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's better to deal with it though in that moment and i'm even learning this still now it's Cheers. better to sit in the moment of the pain and just like really process it mm -hmm. um than it is to shove it down and then have it explode later um or come back later and again like if you're in this process or like if you're being hard on yourself don't like mm. I've been someone that's like a suppressor mm. <laughs> and so Same. it's literally a rewiring of your brain yeah. and having people around you that know the like what you're walking through and the healing you're walking through um keeping and you accountable keeping you accountable and and just being there for you to support you and encourage you and yeah, yeah. whenever I asked that about like the birthdays and stuff I was like oh like the divorce, like when the divorce comes around and all those emotions come back, how does that, like, how do you walk through that? Like, because I, even in the healing that you're in now, like you've grown so much and like walked through so much healing, but even whenever that time comes around where like the divorce date or when he asked you or like those memories come up on your Facebook, it brings some of the things back. Like, how do you well, find freedom? Okay, <laughs> let me just say, that I'm a big dates person. I'm very big on dates. Like, dates, dates are time stamps to me. They're memory stamps, they're whatever you want to call them. Dates, dates and numbers are big, big for me. Um, and so I think I've gotten better. The birthdays for the like babies and the miscarriages and stuff is really hard still sometimes. And sometimes I don't even realize that it's that time until I'm like emotionally freaking out kind of. And then I think and I figure out the date and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's why this is happening. Um, the divorce, I think 
it doesn't affect me as much. I think I've gotten to a place where when I realize that it's starting to affect me, like next month is like the kind of yeah. date, whatever. I think I just start asking God. No, I start asking God to tell me truth mm. um, because I can get into the cycle of, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm never going to be married, blah, blah, blah. But I just ask God, like, can you give me truth right now? Because I can't. I don't want to get into that cycle mm -hmm. again. Um, but the birthdays are really hard still. So just, you would say, being aware mm -hmm. and um, even like preparing yourself with the Lord of being like, yeah, being God, aware. Would you bring me a deeper healing this yeah. year? And maybe like your, I don't want to say like trigger or like maybe it, it's not as hard for you for dates. Maybe it's something else, a place or whatever you have to go. Just like being aware of like whatever it is mm -hmm. and like being sensitive to the Lord and and the memories like on Facebook or social media or whatever, I honestly have just deleted them as I've seen them, mm -hmm. so they don't really pop up anymore. It's not like a, a hate thing or like a whatever. It's just like I just, why why have it there kind yeah. of thing, and I just delete them. Yeah, I don't really care for that to pop up every year. Yeah, I think that's wisdom. Yeah, um, but also it helps because I'm not physically in the same place. Mm -hmm. When I go home, I think I struggle a little bit more because I literally have to pass his mother's house or um, I go, I stay with my grandparents and it's in the same town and mm -hmm. my sister bought my house from me. <laughs> so it's like, that's not as bad anymore because she's redone it. But um, I think just being where places are yeah. is a little harder, um, especially because I'm still single. And I want that. And I just have to literally be like, okay, God, I, I need you. Holy Spirit help. Yeah. I got church yesterday. Um, I need you to help me. And I don't want to avoid this. Like, I really want to yeah. be able to deal with it. Yeah. I think also to, like, encourage you, like, the Lord wants your heart. He cares so much about your heart. And mm -hmm. so through hard times, through the struggle, through pain, through hurt, he wants to draw you closer to him. And so just like leaning into him, mm -hmm. leaning into his truth, leaning into his word, uh, let the pain and the struggle and the hard times draw him close to you. Don't pull away. Don't, don't turn to things that will create more pain, mm -hmm. but turn to him. Like he is so faithful and yes, there's still pain. Like it doesn't mean that like it's a quick fix and like all the pain goes away. Like God's good. Like he wants to see that. He wants to see the pain and the hurt and be vulnerable with he wants you to be vulnerable with him and yeah. he wants to take care of you and so just to encourage you in that like yeah let let your dependency on the lord draw like grow mm -hmm. so. i think too like um even in the midst of pain and just hurt um when we focus on the lord and we look look on his face i don't know to be cheesy or whatever mm -hmm. God just gives us peace and he can even give us joy because he's who we're focusing on. And that was another thing I was going to say too was I think just in any relationship, God should be the person you're looking to mm -hmm. before your even spouse. Like it should be God and then your spouse mm -hmm. and then your kids even. And just even focusing on who God is and that not that it's not going to hurt, mm -hmm. but just who is God. Um, and truly God, like who's his, what's his character, what's his nature and things like that. Yeah, I think is really important to keep your focus on those things. And he's, he's good. He is. Even in the midst of the hurt and the pain. Yeah. You were married, you were able to have sex in like a godly context and then you're single and you're not able to We gonna get sex. real raw and real classic podcast um so Not that i haven't already been yet. yeah so do you feel like have you struggled with masturbation yes uh after my divorce i had mentioned that i was seeing guys and i even contemplating having sex with the guys um because i'd already had sex i was already dirty like whatever getting divorced i'm disgusting kind of mentality until god redeemed those things but i sh didn't struggle with masturbation until a little bit later because mm -hmm. i 
I wasn't doing anything with those guys, but um, I don't know. I just got curious, I guess. Um, and so... So you didn't masturbate at all previously? No. Okay. No. Um, I never really had any longing to, really, um, or really understanding of it at all. Yeah. Um, and so when I, after my marriage ended and I was just, I had feelings, I had things, especially my m trigger mostly is when I'm lonely, mm -hmm. so lonely. I'm like, man, because, okay, I'm physical touch mm -hmm. and like her love language. Yeah. My love like, language. Yeah. Yeah. It's physical touch. And I don't know. I'm the girl that loves to be held. And I'm not getting that yeah. and whatever. And so sex to me was never about, um, I don't know, feeling. It was more about the connection and the emotion and the feel, like the touch. Yeah. Um, which is a lot. But anyway, so once that was like kind of stripped away, Yeah. what do you do? And so I still had feelings and I got curious and there wasn't really like I did a research and stuff trying to be careful because I didn't want to get into porn. I never was into porn. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just started masturbating and like fulfilling that need, but I would mm -hmm. do it and it would feel good in the moment. But then as soon as it was over, I felt disgusting mm -hmm. and like, why do I feel this way if, um, and somebody explained it to me in the sense of, sex is created for intimacy with another person mm -hmm. and so when you are masturbating it's selfishness one mm -hmm. but also you're thinking of it as a mentality of like you're splitting yourself in two like soul and then physical and you're creating a bond mm -hmm. with yourself and wow that's pride <laughs> and so just that revelation and i to be honest, sometimes can still struggle with it because mm -hmm. I still get lonely because yeah. yeah, girl is a single Pringle. But I think I've learned more to find my triggers and then to just ask God mm -hmm. um, to come into those moments. Yeah. I don't think I've really ever told anyone else. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're <laughs> yeah, I'm telling people right now. <laughs> Accountability. I can cut all of that out. Um, but. I think you're the only person, but I haven't really struggled with it. Even mm -hmm. though I felt lonely lately, I haven't really struggled with it so much. Mm -hmm. I think Chad's podcast kind of did it for me. Bless it, Lord. <laughs> so if you haven't watched Chad's, did Jesus masturbate? Yeah. You should check it out. If you struggle with masturbation or if you don't. <laughs> Well, thank you for being on this episode. Thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing like your heart and your struggles and yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. I do want to let you know that there are resources linked down below if you or if you know somebody that is in a toxic relationship or abusive feel free to reach out to me. I also have my Instagram and my phone number linked down below if you have some feedback or want to reach out to me about any topics that you want me to touch on. Yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next month with a new episode.